Carving the Thanksgiving turkey is one of those holiday rituals that throws lots of cooks into a tizzy. You know, you'd think that you're performing open heart surgery at the dining room table or something like that. Don't be a big chicken, you can do this. Forget about those pictures of grandpa carving the turkey in front of the whole family. That's a really bad idea. What you've got is the entire table smelling roast turkey for 10 minutes before you serve it. That's just not gonna work. Instead, if you've got a beautiful turkey, parade it on the platter, take it back out to the kitchen, carve it in private. At least that way nobody's gonna see if you make a mistake. The second thing is, make sure the turkey is really well rested before you begin carving. When it comes to equipment for carving, there are two things that are really important. The first is the carving board. Make sure it's big enough to hold the turkey comfortably and also that it has one of these juice rims around the outside so that you don't get turkey juices splattering all over the counter while you're carving. When it comes to the carving knife, forget those big long knives that you see pictures of. Those are great for carving hams and big roast, uh, joints of meat and things like that. Use a shorter knife for carving poultry. There are a lot of little joints and nooks and crannies that you're gonna to need to get into and a shorter knife is stiffer and it allows you a lot better control for when you're carving. So, let's get down to the bird. The first thing that you want to do with a turkey is take off all of the limbs, the, the legs and the wings, so that you get a clear shot at the breast. Cut the skin between the leg and the breast, and then cut right down here, so that you expose that hip joint. Lay that leg flat. You can see where the hip joins the, the body. Use the tip of the knife just to pop that free. Once you've freed the leg, pull it out of the way. Leave it skin side up. You've got the skin nice and crisp now. You don't want to leave it skin side down so it absorbs the moisture and gets, uh, gets soft. Once the legs are out of the way, do the same thing with the wings. cut right above the joint so that you can see it, flatten it back and pop it free. Now that we've gotten the turkey down to just the breast meat, we're going to do something a little different. Oftentimes you'll see, pick, you'll see, the, you'll see carving like this across the bird. What this does is it makes sure that somebody gets all the skin and all of the overdone meat on the outside and somebody gets all of the underdone meat on the inside. If you free the entire breast and cut it crosswise, everybody gets the same cross section. It's a lot more uh, democratic. In the middle of the breast, you'll find you'll, there's, a, there's a raised bone called the keel bone. You want to just carve along one side of it. Slip the knife between the rib cage and the breast meat and free the breast meat. Just like that. Most of the dark meat you're going to find is on the, on the leg. Separate this into two parts the drumstick, which people just kind of gnaw on and eat, eat whole, and the thigh, which you'll carve. Hold the leg quarter upright, slice straight down between the thigh and the drumstick, and you'll find where they join. Cut right through that. Carve the rest of the thigh meat into nice slices. Now there's one other thing that I didn't tell you about, and that's the cook's secret. On every turkey, there are two oysters. It's the little socket of meat just above the hip, right here. It's the tenderest, moistest part of the bird. So enjoy it in private. It's your reward for a perfectly carved turkey.